it's my pleasure to introduce Eleni Kunalakis, who is running for Lieutenant Governor. Ms. Kunalakis is an American diplomat and businesswoman who served as the U.S. Ambassador to Hungary from 2010 to 2013. It is also now my pleasure to introduce Patrick Lee, who is going to announce the moderators. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for coming today to Arbiter's Forum. It is my pleasure to welcome on stage our two uh, community moderators uh, for this panel. Uh, first, uh, Ms. Betty Williams from the National Association for the Investment of Colored People, joined by Lincoln Ng from OCA. for this forum, you will have two minutes to provide an opening statement. After the opening statement, we will ask the policy questions, and you will have approximately two minutes to respond to each question. When our question time concludes, you will have the opportunity to provide for your closing remarks. With that, I would like Linda to introduce herself. My name is Linda Ng, representing OCA, Asian Pacific Americans Advocate. I'm the National VP of Economic Development, and I'm also an advisor to the Sacramento chapter. Thank you. Now we can start. Thank you so much, Betty and Linda. Thank you so much, Apapa. It is wonderful to be back. Uh, I am Eleni Kunalakis. I'm running for California Lieutenant Governor. I'm the former United States Ambassador to Hungary. Uh, I come from a family of immigrants. My grandmother back in Greece, uh, people say that I remind them of her. She was very tough and very determined, but she never went to school. She never learned to read or to write, but she believed in America enough to let my father come here when he was just 14. He came to California to work in the fields as a farm worker. He came right here to Sacramento State University where he got an education, uh, started a business in Sacramento in housing. I worked with him for 18 years delivering affordable and moderately priced housing here in the Sacramento area. And when I was 43 years old, I was sworn in to be a United States ambassador. I have truly walked the pathway of the American dream, as has my father, by the way, who is here with us uh, today. Dad, thank you for coming. And uh, in our family, we believe in our family, in our country, in service, in participating in our own governance. And I know that for many of you here, my story is very familiar. And as your Lieutenant Governor, I plan to put uh, to use my role as a member of the CSU and the UC system in order to ensure that more of our children are able to attend the UCs and the CSUs, uh, that capacity is built within the system that the universities are preparing our students for the future and to ensure that more and more of our children are able to achieve the kind of American dream that we have. Thank you. Thank you. The first question I will have, and it deals with the use of police force and policies. There's been many instances of police officers shooting unarmed black men including Stefan Clark in Sacramento. It continues to ignite the debate of police brutality, accountability, and race relations across the state and the country. What is your take on the issue, and how would you plan to address it? Well, thank you, Betty. Um, again, as a Sacramentan, I've certainly followed the events of the tragic killing of Stefan Clark, and it has really helped to recognize that we have a serious challenge 
uh, and that we have to work together, both communities and, of course, with law enforcement, um, to make sure that excessive violence is not used uh, against people um, who pose no threat to them. And uh, it was, frankly, heartbreaking. So there are efforts ongoing in the legislature here in Sacramento in order to be able to find the right approach. You know, one of the things again and again that I've noticed, and you know, I'm the mother of two teenage boys, um, I understand that there can be miscommunication, um, but the reality is that we have to be able to slow people down, and if there is a person of interest we have to be able to um, engage them without getting to the level of use of violent force, um, without exhausting other approaches um, that are not lethal. And again, my approach would always be to bring the experts and the stakeholders to the table to work together, recognizing that law enforcement is uh, in extremely dangerous circumstances, and that it is their job, their dangerous job, of ensuring public safety. So um, bringing the stakeholders and the experts together around this issue in order to be able to address it is something that's extremely important, and every elected official uh, in the state of California must continue to focus on it. Thank you. Thank you. Question. This year, this ha hashtag move, Me Too movement brought to light a number of sexual abuse scandals that unfolded in Hollywood and the California State Capitol. Reported instances of de dehumanizing sexual harassment behavior has forced lawmakers and high-profile legislative staff out of the office. Since then, Dozens of legislative efforts have been discussed to address workplace sexual harassment, but many argue that these measures don't address workplace cultures that discourage victims from reporting persuasive harassment. Now, this is a three-point question. As an elected official, uh, we had regular trainings of our staff to be able to understand what inappropriate behavior meant. And I'm very proud that we never had any issues that surfaced um, that uh, came as a result of, uh, of a lack of education. Uh, secondly, I think it is also extremely uh, important in any workplace that you set the right example. And when I served as the United States Ambassador in Hungary, where we had almost 400 U.S. government employees working in our system, always exhibiting professional behavior at the very top sets the right tone throughout the organization. And I will just say that it is a testament that this has come out in the legislature and that we now have a process and a changing culture that will root out these instances, bring it to light, and where it is the most severe, we are seeing people um, basically forced to resign. Thank you. Thank you. The next question that I have is dealing with gun control. Our country continues to experience to see some of the deadliest and the most horrific mass shootings. In response to these events, California has enacted some of the strictest gun control laws in the nation. For example, this past Friday, Governor Jerry Brown signed several gun control bills, including one measure that raises the minimum age from buying rifles from 18 to 21. Our question, could you or would you access the state of, uh, the state of gun control in California? Do you believe that these policies are too much not enough, or strike a good balance between preserving the public safety and our Second Amendment right. Um, so, as I mentioned, I grew up here in um, Sacramento area, and our friends, our community, uh, there was a lot of there were a lot of hunters, including in my family. And when I was a young girl, uh, I would, along with our cousins and friends. 
um, set up BB gun targets right out next to our house because we lived in a very rural part of Sacramento County uh, and had this familiarity with the world of hunting. And what I can tell you is that for the purposes of hunting, you do not need high velocity military grade weapons. Uh, it is outrageous, this idea that people should have these kinds of weapons in their home. Now, when I served overseas, I had a contingent of U.S. Marines uh, and National Guardsmen who would train frequently, and I would train with them because I had a familiarity with weapons. Uh, there is a place for these, but it is not in the hands of our children. It is not in the hands of uh, people who have mental health issues. It is not certainly in the hands of people who um, have, uh, for instance, um, are not allowed on a no-fly list. The, the fact of the matter is that these are extremely dangerous weapons and they are built with the single purpose of killing people. That is what has to be recognized and what California has done uh, to our credit in this state is differentiated between the practice of hunting and sportsmanship and um, the proliferation of weapons that are extremely dangerous and must be controlled. Uh, most recently, the current Lieutenant Governor of California, who you just heard from, Gavin Newsom, put an initiative on the ballot that just recently passed in the last cycle that requires background checks for the kinds of ammunition that uh, automatic and semi-automatic weapons need. And I very much support that, and I hope to continue, again, from the perspective of someone who served as a United States ambassador, who is familiar with these weapons, and who also grew up uh, in a hunting family, that we have to strike the right balance to most importantly ensure public safety, ensure safety for our children in our schools, and have a moderate approach that is sensible and reasonable. Thank you. We are time to call the question. Thanks again for responding thoughtfully to these questions. With that, do you want to provide a one minute closing statement? So very quickly in my last minute, if I'm elected Lieutenant Governor of California, I intend to spend the majority of my time working on issues pertaining to public higher education. I'll sit on the board of the CSU and the UC system. That is two of the three bodies, the third being community college boards that make up our public education here in this state. And very briefly, let me just say that as the daughter of an immigrant, as someone who comes from an immigrant community, the investment and the intention, attention that we spend on public education is absolutely critical. We know that. At the state level, I intend to fight for a greater allocation of the general fund into higher education so that we can bring tuition down for our students, provide more affordable housing on campuses, build capacity so that we can accept more of our kids. In fact, every year for the last seven years, more California students, including Asian Pacific Islander students, are graduating from high school and preparing and prepared to go to the CSU and UC system. But very quickly, so you know, from universities like Sac State, the state university system, the CSU system, turned away 23,000 people last year alone. That is a missed opportunity and it's a mistake. So if I'm back here in a year as your Lieutenant Governor, I'm gonna be talking a lot about public higher education and I hope that you will uh, work with me as a community to ensure that we can advance this very important issue. And again, thank you so much for having me. I hope to have your support on election day. Thank, thank you. you. Let's give